Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I'm here with number three in my anticipated releases videos. So this is going to be for the third quarter of the year from July through September. I will link my previous two anticipated releases videos down below, and um, as with all of these, I don't generally give like a full synopsis for them. There's a couple places where I just am going to read um, like sections from the synopsis, but overall I just kind of talk about like specific things that draw me to a book. Um, and I will also link all the books I talk about either in the description box or if there's not room, I will pin that in a comment. Hey guys, so editing Kara here, um, because apparently I forgot at least three books um, when I was putting this list together, because you know how when you go on Goodreads you can sort by publication date? Well, that's what I always do, and you can sometimes get like different answers, like some books will come up in one book list and not in another if you sort by date published or edition published, and I thought I had checked both, but I apparently missed a few, so I'm going to talk about those here. I'm just going to talk about them all together. I'm not going to put these in chronological order in the video, although when, when I link the books, um, I will put these in publication order. So the first one is a middle grade nonfiction book, and that is History Smashers, The American Revolution. I really loved the um, women's suffrage book that I read from this series, which was one of my favorite nonfiction books I read last year. So I'm just really excited about this one. This is definitely one of the topics in their lineup that appeals to me most. Like obviously we talk a lot about the American Revolution in American history classes, but um, and I do know quite a bit of the like famous myths about the American Revolution, but I'm excited to find out more. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that one. That comes out on July 20th. Next is actually one of my most anticipated books for the quarter, <laughs> and I forgot this the first time. Um, that is Curses by Lish McBride. This is a gender-swapped Beauty and the Beast retelling. I still love Beauty and the Beast retellings. I know a lot of people are tired of them, but I will, I think I'm pretty much always gonna love them. Um, and I'm really intrigued by this one. And also it's blurbed by Marissa Meyer, whom I love. Um, and yeah, I just think this sounds really really interesting. Apparently the reason that the female main character is cursed is because she refused to marry the man that her mother wanted her to. Um, and yeah, I just think this sounds super interesting. And this one also, yeah, that one also happens to come out on July 20th. So really excited about that one. And then the last one that I'm going to talk about that I forgot the first time around is also somewhat Beauty and the Beast vibes. And that is The Monsters of Rookhaven by Padraig Kenny. Um, this looks like the first book in a series. And like I said, it's kind of giving me slight Beauty and the Beast vibes um, because it's about a young girl. I'm sorry, I'm like reading off of my phone here. Um, it's about a young girl who has always known she is a monster. When the glamour protecting her unusual family from the human world is torn and an orphaned brother and sister stumble upon Rookhaven, Mirabelle soon discovers that friendship can be found in the outside world. But as something far more sinister comes to threaten them all, it quickly becomes clear that the true monsters aren't necessarily the ones you can see. That's a concept that really interests me. Um, I like the sound of the focus on friendship. Um, yeah, I just, I think the atmosphere is going to be good for this one too. It says, a thought-provoking, chilling, and beautifully written novel, Padraig Kenny's The Monsters of Rookhaven, stunningly illustrated by Edward Bettison, explores difference and empathy through the eyes of characters you won't want to let go. So I think that just all sounds really good. I'm sorry for that one. I basically just read you the synopsis, um, but I am interested in that one, and that one comes out September 21st. So I think those are all the ones I forgot. Uh, maybe I'll come across others, and I'd have to, I'll have to do like an updated version, but so far, I think these are the only ones I missed. So back to past Kara. Okay, so I'm really excited. Um, I think I have a more reasonable number of books this quarter, um, and also judging by at least the like days of the week that these release on, and if there's like a paperback edition and available and all of that, um, it looks like we're having a lot of maybe smaller press fantasy in this quarter, which is very exciting, although I'm not sure. That's just kind of the impression I got. Um, so let's get started. I only have three books to talk about in July. The first one comes out on July 1st, and that is Song of the Forever Reigns by E.J. Mello. Um, so this is a fantasy novel where there are sorceresses and um, I, I don't know if all of their power comes from their, from their voice, or at least our main character, her voice has some kind of magical power, and she's given a mission to go to this duke's estate, because um, he's like uh, abusing his tenants, and her job is to stop him, um, I think by like marrying him or being engaged to him, but she starts to fall for the rightful heir um, to this dukedom or whatever, um, and then it turns out that maybe this person's reasons for overthrowing the duke may not be completely selfless, so it sounds like there's some interesting character things, um, like an interesting romance, and some politics, so I think that sounds really good. Um, and then either on July 6th or the 13th, depending on which edition you get, is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I will be getting the gorgeous UK paperback, which is the picture I have up right now. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a fairy tale retelling. It's one of the ones <laughs> about swans that I can never remember the name for. Um, 
Although in my defense, I was in a play where we did like a version of one of these tales and it was called something different. So I always think of it as that name, even though I don't think that's the proper name for it. So that's my excuse. Um, but anyway, I'm pretty sure this is a fairy tale retelling. And um, I, there's just a lot of things about this that make it sound really interesting to me. We have a like marriage of convenience or arranged marriage trope. Um, sounds like there's an emphasis on family. There's like a lot of politics. Um, our main female character, she finds out that there is a conspiracy to take over her kingdom. Um, and then the synopsis says she must place her trust in the very boy she fought so hard not to marry, um, which just sounds very interesting and also magic. So I just think this sounds like a good time. Um, July 13th is Sword Stone Table, Old Legends, New Voices, edited by Swapna Krishna and Jen Northington. Um, this is a collection of gender bent, race bent, queer and inclusive Camelot retellings. Um, so like Arthurian legend and kind of surrounding legends. I just said Camelot to sum it up. Um, and this just sounds really interesting. There's a few authors I'm really excited about. Preeti Chipper, I think she had one of the stories that I really loved in A Thousand Beginnings and Endings. Um, Roshni Chokshi I've enjoyed things from and Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, who I love. Um, the only thing that's kind of giving me pause about this one is that it sounds like most of the stories are contemporary or sci-fi. Generally, the story collections that I tend to enjoy most are ones that lean more into fantasy. So we'll see. I'll be interested to see reviews for when this comes out um, or when this does come out, but I am intrigued. And then moving into August, on August 1st, we have Grimrose Girls by Laura Pohl. Um, this one sounds interesting. So it's like, um, it's kind of giving me dark academia vibes. There's like a murder mystery, but it's like fairy tale retellings because it reimagines um, like fairy tale heroines as um, girls who go to this like elite and kind of creepy school or like boarding school and then there's like a murder mystery and they have to figure out who did this and like you know keep themselves and each other safe and everything you guys know i don't like dark academia but the thing that got me about this one is the fairy tale aspect so this is a maybe i don't know um i have i have it as one to read right now but we'll see i hope i hope it leans more into the fairy tale stuff and less into the dark academia stuff but i know dark academia is a big trend right now so that probably won't happen um but yeah intriguing then we have seven books on August 3rd. The first one is A Dragonbird in the Fen by Laura Rookert. And this is one of the ones where I'm just gonna read you the description um, because this sounds incredible. Like every aspect of this just sounds fantastic. So this is a fantasy novel. When an assassin kills Princess Giara's older sister Scylla, her vengeful ghost is doomed to walk their city of glittering canals, tormenting loved ones until the murderer is brought to justice. While the entire kingdom mourns, Scylla's betrothed arrives and requests that 17-year-old Giara take her sister's place as his bride to confirm the alliance between their countries. Marrying the young king intended for her sister and traveling to his distant home is distressing enough, but with dyslexia and years of scholarly struggles, Giara abandoned any hope of learning other languages long ago. She's terrified of life in a foreign land where she'll be unable to communicate. Then, Giara discovers evidence that her sister's assassin comes from the king's own country. If she marries the king, Giara can hunt the murderer and release her family from Scylla's ghost, whose thirst for blood mounts every day. To save her family, Giara must find her sister's killer before he murders her too. Like, this just sounds incredible. Like, this is, I think, one of my most anticipated releases for this quarter. Like, just, oh my gosh, so many things about this sound fantastic. Like, water adjacent fantasy, at least at the beginning. Um, a really strong, like, sister bond, even though one of the sisters is not around anymore. Um, the ghost aspect sounds fascinating. I love the sound of this, like, political situation. I don't know if like the king that she marries is going to be like an ally or what, but that sounds interesting. I think it's really fantastic to see dyslexia representation in a fantasy novel, so that sounds great. Like just the mystery sounds really interesting. The world, like I, everything about this sounds brilliant and I cannot wait for this one to come out. Next is Dark Waters by Catherine Arden, and this is the third book in the Small Spaces series. Um, I've been really enjoying this series. This is a middle grade horror series where each book is um, kind of themed around a different season. This is the one about spring. Um, very interesting cover, as you can see. And all I really remember about this one is that um, the main characters get shipwrecked on an island and they have to get off the island before it's too late. I don't generally like shipwreck stories or like boat stories, really, um, despite saying despite just saying that I like water adjacent fantasy. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not I'm not so big on shipwrecks or like boats or ships or anything like that. But I've been really enjoying this series, so I'm still excited about it. Um, next is Black Boy Joy, edited by Kwame Mabalia. This just sounds so lovely. So this is a collection of stories by a bunch of different Black authors. Um, I, I believe there are men and non-binary authors writing, and it's about 
black boy joy. So young black boys just being happy and living their lives and it just this just sounds so wonderful. Um, there's a few authors in particular I'm very excited about. Um, Kwame Mabalia, I of course he's going to have a story and I have really enjoyed him. Jason Reynolds who is one of my favorite authors um, and then a few that I haven't read but I'm really excited to. B.B. Alston, Suyi Davies Okumboa, Toshi Anyabuchi, and Justin A. Reynolds. Um, those are all authors that I have not read from before but I'm really looking forward to and I just love the concept of this anthology. Also on this date is Like a Love Song by Gabriella Martins. Um, this is a contemporary where it's like a fake dating situation. Um, our main character is a girl, she's like a, I think she's a famous pop star and she goes through this very public and embarrassing breakup and so her PR team is like, okay we're gonna set you up by to like date somebody else so that you know it, you can kind of like rehabilitate your image a little bit and so she thinks that she's getting set up with like this kind of player and like sort of like a bad boy um actor almost and it turns out he's just like the softest sweetest boy um the premise like the synopsis describes him as a soft-hearted british indie film star and this is about their romance and of course real feelings develop this just sounds so cute. I can't wait. Also on this date is The Plentiful Darkness by Heather Kastner and this is another one that I'm just gonna read um, the summary. In order to survive on her own, 12-year-old Rooney Debara collects precious moonlight, which she draws from the evening sky with her very rare and most magical lunar mirror. All the while she tries to avoid the rival roughhouse boys and yet another more terrifying danger, the dreaded thing that's been disappearing children in the night. When Trick Aiden, the worst of the roughhouse boys, steals her lunar mirror, Rooney will do whatever it takes to get it back, even if it means leaping into a pool of darkness after it swallows Trick and her mirror. Or braving the plentiful darkness, a bewitching world devoid of sky and stars. Or begrudgingly teaming up with Trick to confront the magician and unravel the mute and unravel the magic that has trapped Wary Bones' children. This premise just sounds wonderful, like so atmospheric and interesting. Um, I really enjoyed The Bone Garden. I have plans to buddy read The Forest of Stars with my friend Jocelyn very soon, so I'm anticipating that I will continue to enjoy Heather Kastner's books and this just sounds great. Um, also on this day we have The Wild Ones by Nafisa Assad. This is a fantasy novel. Um, our main character is a girl who was rescued by a boy who gave her a box of stars and she uses these to access the magic of, the, of this place called The Between um, and she uses that magic to save other girls who are in trouble. But then um, something happens and she finds out that the boy who originally saved her is in trouble and so they all have to try and rescue him together. Um, this just sounds like a fantasy novel that has a lot of like female friendship and solidarity which I love. Um, I read The Candle and the Flame by Nafisa Assad, uh, I guess it was a couple of years ago now, and I didn't love it, like it, it was fine, but I didn't um, enjoy it as much as I was hoping to, but this premise sounds fantastic, so I think I'm gonna like this one even more. And finally the last book on this date is Just Be Cool, Jenna Sakai by Debbie Machiko Florence, and this is a contemporary where a girl gets dumped by her boyfriend and so she decides that she's not gonna date anymore, she's just gonna focus on school, and then to make the breakup even worse, her ex is also on the newspaper that she, the school newspaper that she's working at, um, and then she starts starts like spending more time with this other boy and she starts like questioning her decision to like not date for the rest of school and everything and this just sounds really cute. I just have like a good feeling about this author. I have a couple books by her on my TBR and do you guys ever have those books where like the premise it's not it, it like sounds interesting but you can't really put your finger on like what about it specifically is like drawing you to it like there's nothing like that's particularly standing out to you you just have a good feeling about it that's just how i feel about this book and this author so hopefully i am proven correct on august 10th i have a nonfiction book called abuelita faith by kat armas um i've been really excited about this one for a while so this is a book about um the theology of women on the margins and how they have a lot of knowledge and expertise that often goes unrecognized. Um, I follow the author on Twitter and she's really, I just like really admire her there as well and I just think this sounds like a really wonderful and important book. I also really like this cover. Then I have three books on October 17th. The first one is one of my most anticipated releases for the whole year and that is Redemptor by Jordan Ifuego. Ray Bear was my favorite novel I read last year. Um, I can't wait for this conclusion because it's just a duology. The UK cover is beautiful and I can't really talk about too much about what it's about out, um, because obviously it's like the last book in a series, but I am so so excited for this. Also on this date is Velvet Was the Night by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, um, and this is like I think a like a thriller or like a, a noir, some kind of thing like that. There's like a mystery and um, like spy aspect to it. It's set in the 1970s and we follow several different main characters. One of them is a young young woman who um, she she really likes reading these like romantic like adventure stories and then one day this woman who our main character like kind of knows about and sort of thinks of her as like having it all together or having this perfect romantic adventurous life, um, she disappears or like something happens to her and so this main character has to try and 
like figure out what happened to her, maybe like rescue her. Um, sounds like there's gonna be a lot of like romance and danger and spies. I don't know, we'll see. I think this cover is absolutely stunning. Um, it's something I literally wrote down in my notes is my love for SMG transcends genre, <laughs> which is true. Like I don't tend to like this genre, like these like thriller or like action or spies or anything like that. I also don't care for, uh, for historical fiction of the 1970s, but that doesn't matter because I love Sylvia Murnau Garcia. So still excited about this one. Um, and then the last one on this date is The Many Meanings of Meilan by Andrea Wong. Um, and this one, it's about a girl who her grandmother dies and their family ends up moving from Boston's Chinatown to Redbud, Ohio. And so here's a section from the synopsis. Everything in Redbud is the opposite of Chinatown and Meilan's not quite sure who she is. Being renamed at school only makes it worse. She decides she has many Meilans, each inspired by a different Chinese character with the same pronunciation as her name. Sometimes she is mist, cooling and invisible. Other times she's basket, carrying her parents' hopes and dreams and her guilt of not living up to them. And sometimes she is bright blue, the way she feels around her new friend Logan. Meilan keeps her facets separate until an injustice at school shows her the power of bringing her many selves together. This just sounds beautiful and heartbreaking and just like it's going to handle so many important things. Um, yeah, I think that sounds wonderful. So I'm very excited for that one. Um, and then on August 31st is another nonfiction that is Steeped in Stories, Timeless Children's Novels to Refresh Our Tired Souls by Metalia Perkins. Um, and this is a book that looks at some specific classic children's books and authors um, and like examines how they can still have resonance today for adult readers and especially in our very uncertain and troubling times. Um, and something that I really like about the book is um, from the synopsis it sounds like it's also going to really like interrogate the harmful aspects of some of these books and authors and like talk about how they're like a book can have good things and bad things and how you kind of approach that. Um, so yeah, I just think this sounds really fantastic and several of the authors are ones that I really enjoy. So I think that sounds really cool. Um, Frances Hodgson Burnett is one, C.S. Lewis, um, I think Ella Montgomery who I have only ever read Little Women and it wasn't my favorite thing but I'm interested to see what this author says about her. Um, so yeah, I think this just sounds like really really interesting especially if you um, have read some children's classics and I think also it's going to probably speak more broadly as well to um, just the way that books can transcend their time um, and the way that books can bring comfort in troubling times and inspiration like not just like a passive thing but like they can kind of galvanize you um, and also I think the interrogating harmful aspects like recognizing that things you love are not perfect I think that is also going to be very important in various contexts. Okay and then wrapping it up with September. Um, on September 2nd I have another of my most anticipated releases for the whole year <laughs> um, and that is Unraveler by Frances Harding because yes Frances Harding has another book coming out this year and I just I'm so excited. Um, you guys know that Frances Harding is one of my favorite authors in the world um, and this one has a very very short synopsis so I'm just going to read the whole thing. Frances Harding is one of those authors where I don't really need to read the synopsis like it's an automatic yes I want to read um, but other people might care about the synopsis. Kellen and Nettle live in a world where anyone can create a life-destroying curse but only one person has the power to unravel them. But not everyone is happy he can do so and suddenly he's in a race to save both himself and all those who have been touched by magic. So that's the only like synopsis we have so far and again I don't really need to know that but it sounds interesting. Um, then the three books on September 7th. The first one is another of my most anticipated releases for like definitely this quarter, possibly the year, um, and that is So Many Beginnings by Bethany C. Morrow. This is a retelling of Little Women that follows an all-black family um, and this is, I, I'm just so excited about this. I really enjoyed A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow um, and so I'm really excited to just read more from her and I also think it's so cool that we're getting a Little Women retelling by a Black author centering a Black family because um, the couple of times, I think I've read it twice, the couple of times I've read Little Women when I was younger it did not, like I did not even realize it was said during the Civil War um, because there were very very few mentions of it. Like I knew that their father was fighting in a war but I guess I think I had some vague conception that the book was set in England because it just kind of felt like that. I don't know. Anyway, I'm excited for this. Also on that day is Unfollow Me, Essays on Complicity by Jill Louise Busby. Um, this is a nonfiction book. It is described as a memoir in essays and I think this book is going to focus on kind of performative activism, um, also like performative diversity. Um, it mentions that in the synopsis and um, kind of the like pat yourself on the back <laughs> like um, feelings and 
actions in like progressive spaces and I'm just going to read a small section from the description. So to describe this book, it's about tokenism, microfame, and inhabiting spaces, real and virtual, black and white, where complicity is the price of entry. Busby's social commentary manages to be both wryly funny and achingly open-hearted as she recounts her shape-shifting moves among the subtle hierarchies of progressive communities. Unfollow Me is a sharply personal and self-questioning critique of white fragility and other words for racism, respectability politics and other words for shame, and all the places where fear masquerades as progress. I think that sounds really interesting and really important and um, I have not read anything by this author before. Um, she apparently did like, she had some very um, popular like online essays that went viral which I think was part of the inspiration for this book, like kind of her um, experiences after that. Also on the state is Pahua and the Soul Sealer by Lori M. Lee. Um, this is part of the Rick Ryden Presents imprint and our main character is a Hmong girl and she accidentally wakes up an angry spirit and when that happens it seems like a lot of things go wrong including her brother falling into some kind of sleep that he won't wake up from um, and she tries to fix that but then she accidentally summons a demon and a shaman shows up to help her get rid of it and then the two of them um, it says they go to the spirit worlds to try to wake her brother up um, or to, to try and like fix things so that they can wake her brother up and I just think that sounds really interesting. And then also on that day is Defi the Night by Bridget Kemmerer. This is the first book in a new fantasy series by her um, and this one has like quite a like quite an involved summary I think. We're following two main characters I think and one of them is an apothecary apprentice um, and the other one I think is a prince and the apothecary apprentice, this girl, she is, um, she has been smuggling like medicine and cures to help people who don't have access to them because there is a plague going on in this magical world and there's only like one thing that can treat or cure the plague and of course the rich people always end up getting treated and not the poor people. So this apothecary girl, um, she has been um, like working to combat that and it seems like the medicine is not working the same way or like it, they're running out or something like that. So um, there's starting to be this like political breakdown. There are like um, stirrings of rebellion in the kingdom and um, this whole thing already sounded really interesting to me. I was already putting this on my list and then I saw one of the reviews mention that this is a very loose Robin Hood retelling and I got even more excited. Um, I apparently really love Robin Hood retellings so uh, which is surprising to me in a way because I never really had like particular feelings about them but I have really enjoyed like a lot of the ones I've read. I haven't read that many but the ones I have have been really just fantastic. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for this. I have enjoyed some of Bridget Kimmerer's books before. Some I have been more mixed on, um, but I do think this one sounds really good. And then two novels on September 14th. The first one is Not Here to Be Liked by Michelle Quach. This is a contemporary novel and we're following a girl who is trying to be named editor-in-chief of her school newspaper. Um, and then this other like super popular kind of jock boy decides he's gonna run for it instead and then I think he either wins or it looks like he's going to win and this main character she's like there's no like I'm so much more qualified the only reason that he's getting it is because he's just more like marketable basically he's like this popular good-looking um, guy and so she writes this really angry like feminist essay about her experience and what happens to her and it goes viral and suddenly people are weighing in on like what she experienced and like is this actually um, is this actually sexism or is she just like crying misogyny and that kind of thing um, but then she starts having some internal conflict because they the two of them end up spending more time together her and this guy and she might be developing feelings for him and she's like how can I have feelings for I think the synopsis calls him like this the face of patriarchy or something so I'm like tentatively excited about this one I think it could be really incisive and really enjoyable and I'm just a little nervous like I hope I hope that the author pulls off the romance with serious issues thing. Judging by the synopsis, I think she is going to handle it well and give these issues like the attention that they deserve. Um, so I'm yeah, I'm like hopeful about this one. Also on this day is Recipe for Disaster by Amy Lucido. Um, and this is a novel in verse, prose, and recipes, um, which sounds really great. And our main character is a girl who's Jewish but who doesn't feel very connected to Judaism. Um, but then when her best friend has this like amazing bat mitzvah party, she decides that she wants one too and so she kind of throws herself into learning more about Judaism and hoping that if she can learn enough, she she can convince her parents um, so that she can have this wonderful bat mitzvah party as well. So she's learning more about being Jewish. Um, it says something about like secrets. I don't know if they're like family secrets or what. Um, also baking is a big element of this book um, and it sounds like it's going to be about um, about our main, the main character realizing that she is already Jewish enough and that she doesn't have to fit this like arbitrary um, 
like mold in order to be Jewish. Um, a line from the summary says, most importantly, Hannah realizes that the only person's permission she needs to be Jewish is her own. Um, so I just think this sounds like a really lovely middle grade and I'm really excited to read it. Three books on September 21st. The first one is a poetry collection that I am extremely excited for and that is The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman. Um, this has the same title as her inauguration poem, which I, I know I keep talking about. I'm sorry if like if you're not from the US you're probably sick of hearing about it, but it was just really fantastic. Um, and so this collection includes that poem but also some other work from her and I have just been so excited to read more from Amanda Gorman to like get more of her work so I'm really really excited for that. Also on this day is As If On Cue by Marissa Cantor um, and this this is like a really interesting one because some aspects sound great and some aspects I'm a little hesitant about. Um, so it's a hate to love romance and it features theater. So our two main characters are a boy and a girl and the boy is, I think like he's part of band or something and the girl is in theater and they're fighting for the same, I think, funding. And then it kind of escalates into a like prank war that goes too far. And so then they kind of get sentenced to having to work together um, and write and produce a musical together. So that sounds really great, except there's a couple things I'm nervous about. One is the prank war thing. I hate reading books about prank wars. Like. I think maybe this one will be okay because it sounds like it's mainly at the beginning of the book. It's kind of the setup, but I hate pranks. I don't find them funny at all and I don't enjoy reading about them. Um, and then also the competition thing. I am already very picky about um, hate to love and contemporary books and especially when it's like characters who are like competing for the same like work type thing. Like I don't know, there's just, I don't like the dynamic that that creates and so I'm a little nervous about that. But the other aspects like the theater thing sounds fantastic and um, yeah, so like I'm tentatively excited about this one but we will see. Um, and I think also Marissa Cantor writes um, Jewish re representation in her books which is also really cool to see. So I am excited about this one. We'll see how the like prank and hate to love stuff goes but I am excited. Also on that day is The Wolf's Curse by Jessica Vitalis um, and this is about a boy who witnesses this great white wolf steal his grandfather's soul um, instead of reaching the sea in the sky and but like people don't believe him about it. They say he's like crying wolf um, and so he has to prove his innocence. This book is also about grief and I like I think the premise does sound interesting, but the thing that really sold me on this one is in the summary they compare the narrator or the narration style to The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, which is one of my favorite books. So if this is like narrated in a similar way or like perspective, I think it'll just be really good. Um, I know it's like it's kind of setting yourself up for disappointment when you like go into a book thinking about one of your favorite books, but I do think that aspect sounds really interesting, so I'm excited for that one. And then finally, the last books I'm going to talk about are the four books coming out on September 28th that I have here. The first one is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Um, now I have not read anything from Stephanie Garber. I know her Caraval series has very mixed reviews. I do own the first book and I'm gonna get around to it at some point, but this just sounds like a really dramatic and really romantic story that like just I don't know, the vibes appeal to me, so we'll see how this goes. Um, our main character is a girl who makes a deal with the tragic Prince of Hearts in order to stop the wedding of the love of her life, and in exchange she must give the prince three kisses. Um, but things, like it turns out the bargain does not go the way she expects it to, and this, again, dramatic and romantic, it just sounds really interesting, so I'm excited for that one. Also the Barnes & Noble special edition is like rose-colored and it's really pretty, so you know, just aesthetically. That's a fun bonus. Um, and then also on that date is Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. This is a fantasy novel following two um, two main characters. One of them is a girl named Coffee who works at the Night Zoo, which sounds like this really like interesting um, like collection of like animals and so she takes care of them in order to um, raise enough money to I think like free her family or like pay off her family's debt or something. And our other main character is a boy named Ikon. Um, and Coffee ends up saving Econ's life, but in the process somehow this ruins his chances of becoming a warrior. Um, and so then the two of them end up re uh, teaming up to defeat a monster because they both think it'll help them. I think Econ is trying to redeem himself and Coffee is going to use the bounty on this monster to pay off her debts and free her family. And this just sounds like a really, really interesting fantasy. Next is another book I'm very, very excited for, and that is Lake's Edge by Lyndall Clipstone. Um, this one I'll read a short section from the summary. When Violetta Graceling arrives at Haunted Lake's Edge estate, she expects to find a monster. She knows the terrifying rumors about Rowan Sylvanen, who drowned his entire family when he was a boy. But neither the estate nor the monster are what they seem. And so then Violetta discovers that he is bound to the Lord Under, a death god who lives in the lake. Um, sounds like there's some mystery. This is really giving me like Phantom of the Opera meets Beauty and the Beast vibes, which are two of my favorite things. So hopefully I don't ruin this one with my high expectations. Um, but this just sounds fantastic. I'm really excited for it. And then next is another one of my like most anticipated releases I think for this whole quarter. 
um, possibly the whole year, just for like sheer adorableness. <laughs> like I can't handle it. And this is called Garlic and the Vampire by Brie Paulson. And this is a graphic novel with our main character Garlic, who just wants to attend her nice safe garden, but the villagers end up like saying that she should be the one to go and like confront this like scary vampire who's moved into town and Garlic is afraid but she agrees to do it and I think then she ends up like making friends with him or something. Um, the synopsis says, featuring an unassuming heroine who discovers her own courage and leadership skills and learns to look past stereotypes. Like, look at how cute it looks. I can't, like, I'm just, like, losing it about how adorable this book looks. Um, so yes, I'm very, very excited for that one. It just looks, like, so, like, deeply wholesome, and I'm so excited for it. So yes, that is the last book I'm going to talk about today. Um, again, I think compared to my previous ones, this is, like, a much more reasonable number <laughs> of anticipated releases. So please comment down below and let me know if any of these are also on your list. Um, let me know a book that you're really excited about. And just to mix things up, if you don't have anticipated release that you're like really looking forward to, let me know a backlist book that you haven't gotten to yet, but you're also excited to because like I know that we can get very wrapped up in like what's coming out soon in like the world of book blogging, but backlist is important too. So let me know that if you would prefer. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye.